Hello there, my fellow members of the Superior Xenos faction, and welcome to another slightly humorous Warhammer 40k lore video. After a lot of insufficient voting, this time we finally got around to a Warhammer humor video concerning the Eldar. Now, a lot of this stuff is more or less canon, so the amount of funniness in it will be up to you. Just like the title says, this video will tell, or show you, why the Eldar are, in many ways, much better than you. Or at least in their perception. I am your host, the Farseer narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Alright folks, we're not really gonna go over who the Eldar are in this video. All you need to know is that they are aliens. However, don't be fooled by their anthropomorphic appearance. Eldar may look like unnaturally tall, slender, athletic and ethereally beautiful humans, but they are entirely alien. Despite all that, you might still wonder how alien are these aliens, at least when compared to a human. Fortunately, you are in luck because Ordo Zeno's Inquisitor GDN is here today to tell you all about their differences. Of course, if you'd like to listen to the Eldar themselves, that can all be summed up in one sentence. They are better than you in every possible way, at every possible thing. The Eldar are similar to humans in body structure nevertheless. They do have a torso, two legs, two arms, and a head in the right place. They are very tall, standing around 2 meters or up to 7 feet in height, with longer, leaner limbs and elegant features, penetrating almond-shaped eyes and pointy ears. In fact, Macha the Farseer from the Dawn of War games has a cannon height of 2.2 meters. The Eldar also have an entirely different gait from a human. Their movements radiate an inhuman elegance, and a grace similar to that of a feline. This is obvious in their fighting styles and the dexterity with which they wield their weapons. The Eldar senses of sight, hearing, touching or smelling are many times greater than that of a human. Eldar are very long-lived. Even the wimpiest of them can live at least a thousand years easily. The Eldar psychers, particularly the ones called Farseers, can live way longer than that. In fact, arguably the most famous Eldar ever, Eldrad Ulfran, is 10,000 years old and counting, although for some reason he's also turning into a crystal. Eldar may develop some fine lines and wrinkles as they get older, but they will never get crippled or decrepit as a human. An Eldar grandpa can still kick your ass. They live at a pace and intensity many times greater than that of a human. Their hearts beat twice as fast as a human, but only half as strong. Their minds process thought and emotion with baffling speed, and their physical reactions are almost too fast for the paltry human eye to follow. All of the Eldar can manipulate mental energy, but such raw mental power does have a price. To an Eldar, all the experiences of life are available to a heightened degree. The intellectual rewards of study, the exhilaration of war, and every imaginable pleasure and pain in between. This potential for joy is paralleled by an equal capacity for despair, anger, and even hatred. No creature, not even the superior Eldar, can taste these rich fruits of emotion in an uncontrolled or undisciplined way without consequence. Of course, unless you're a Dark Eldar. The skull of an Eldar has an unusual bone texture, and their teeth are outgrowths of their jawbone. Also, the bones of an Eldar are far lighter than a human's. The texture and formation suggest solidification from some kind of liquid. Complex joints and fused portions retain flexibility and durability. There is no marrow analog, but the internal cavities are packed with fibrous channels of an unknown purpose. For all you fetishists out there, their ear tips are erogenous zones, their skeletal structure is densely packed with a muscle-like analog with fibers that have a spiral structure similar to a coiled spring. These muscles then surround the complex columns of intermeshed segments. The entire structure suggests enormous elasticity and tolerance to movement. 
their physiology thus supports very high speed maneuverability. Their muscles are tightly packed and much more effective than the muscle fibers found in a human. Although they do not bulk up in the same way as a human, they are actually much stronger pound for pound than a human. They have no body fat whatsoever, ever. They will drive any nutritionist out of business by simply standing there. That doesn't seem to stop the females from having breasts though. Clearly they are superior beings. According to Deathwatch, The Rights of Battle, a 7 foot tall, fully armored Eldar only weighs about 60 kilograms or 130 pounds. They possess a flexible bony plate like a second ribcage beneath the abdominal muscles. Eat your heart out, Astartes Black Carapace. Their inner organs are vaguely human analogs, but they demonstrate a complexity and aesthetic that is just unnatural and plain superior. They have pulmonary muscles working like a human's lungs with temperature regulators and detached lymph glands. Their digestive and renal systems are just as complex as their other organs. There is no peristalsis, chemical enzymes or digestive fluid. Their waste is crystallized and odorless. That's right, even their poop is superior. Eldar conception occurs over an extended period of time and requires additional genetic material from the partner or partners at preordained stages throughout gestation. Lucky you, fellow godsmen, there is no chance of a baby after a one night stand. The Eldar brain has multiple lobes, extreme density of cerebral matter, various unknown ganglia and central ridged organs. The fundamental structure of their brains resembles a human's, but it is far more complex and has additional layers of an unknown composition. Eldar DNA has a quintuple helix structure, as opposed to a human's double, and 20 chemical bases instead of a human's four. The Eldar live lives unsullied by illness, frailty or disease, as opposed to a petty human. They appear to have complete control over their nervous system and bodily functions, such as consciously shutting down the nerves in a damaged part of the body, or mentally forcing a wound to close and the blood to congeal faster. Given more time and further psychic manipulation, they can also regenerate any bodily damage that they may have suffered, and this can include even regrowing a lost limb. The Eldar physical condition can be heavily affected by their mental and spiritual condition. When they are sad or depressed, they can be seen by an observer to literally age faster. However, they will quickly regain their vitality once they pay a visit to the Eldar shrink. In a similar fashion, when focusing their rage and determination, they can literally become stronger and more powerful. Although most of the Eldar do not formally develop or train their psychic abilities to their full potential, all of them make use of telepathic or empathic communication. No need for words in their culture, like the lowly monkey. Now, knowing all of this, you're without a doubt wondering, can there be any Eldar-human hybrids? The answer is yes, but actually no. Or possibly yes? According to the old fluff from Rogue Trader, which is older than I am at this point, and has been almost entirely retconned out of existence, once upon a time the human and the Eldar had a common ancestor. Which nowadays does not make sense because the Eldar are known to be much, much older than humanity. There was a theory back in the day that both races were actual creations of the old ones. Another theory says that the Catan made the humans as an unsuccessful attempt to copy the Eldar made by the Old Ones. And all of this nonsense made it possible for both races to interbreed and produce viable offspring. For example, a certain guy called Ilian Nastasi, chief librarian of the Ultramarines back in the day, was in fact part Eldar. Of course, this is heresy, and if Games Workshop has ever had one moment of good judgment, it was this one as they chose to write him out of existence, and replace him with a much more badass character called Varro Tigurius. And thus, canon-confirmed human-Eldar hybrids no longer appear outside of fanworks. In a slightly more recent novel called The Chapter's Due, which is part of the Ultramarine series, 
there is a minor character called Karja Salombar, the Corsair Queen. This character was described as beautiful, with pale skin, and warm almond-shaped eyes of striking violet. Some saying that there was Eldar blood in her veins, and, and I quote, more than a hint of inhuman Eldar to her life form, and an azure hair flowing around her shoulders. This character then manages to kill three Ultramarine brothers, and, gasp, nearly kills him, Kato Sicarius himself. But she does get impaled by the glorious Ultramarine's second company standard. Nowadays, some think it is still possible for Eldar human hybrids to be born. Although, if they are to be born, they would probably be born in Komora. What is Komora, you ask? Well, basically you take the scriptural cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and then all the worst aspects of 16th century Port Royal, 19th century Singapore, Las Vegas and Mos Eisley Spaceport, and then throw in about 300% more scum and villainy, and there you go. We think this because those Dark Eldar have to be using those slaves for something else other than flaying. On the other hand, according to the novel Path of the Outcast, Eldar have markedly heightened olfactory senses, and given their infamous state of inflated self-regard, for an Eldar to couple with a human would be even more disgusting than a human coupling with a goat. In either case, the pregnant female would likely regard the impending pregnancy with utter disgust or utter xenophobic horror. Even if said child gets born, it would then be hated by the humans for being an incarnation of the idea of genetic impurity. It would be laughed at by the human kids, and outright exiled by the Eldar. So, at the end of the day, the Eldar's arrogance and penchant for justice planned, which is almost enough to make Zinj proud, paired with their being used as the defenders of the status quo, and the blatant favoritism they get in many of the works featuring them, have caused them to be one of the most hated races in the fandom. Yes, even more than the space zombie Egyptians or the weeaboo space communists. Part of that stems from the fact that they are a very hit and miss army. When they work, they work ridiculously well. When they don't, they are pitiful. There's also a hidden faction that argues, quite correctly, that the Eldar are insufficiently orky. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the clearly superior Eldar Master Race for today. Humans can only hope to be as good as they are in 90% of the things they do. What about you? Are you a fan of the Eldar Race and all their unique traits and abilities? Or do you hate them with a passion? Either way, feel free to express your thoughts, opinions or questions in the comments below. If you found the video to be informative, or even mildly humorous, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. And if you want to support the channel more directly, you can also visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and have an awesome healthy day. May the blessings of Isha be upon you.